All right, guys, we are going to take a look at the new project uh, for this week, the 1.1.3 STEM investigation. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And you will see we have one document in here. Okay, so I'm going to open this assignment document. I will frequently talk about the questions to guide you, and that is what is here within this document. Okay. So for this project, what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to spend two days researching, maybe one and a half, and then you're going to use the other two days to create a presentation to display your research. Okay. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to pick some type of artifact and it can be any product at all. And you are going to basically find out more about it. You're going to look at its history what its impact uh, on the world has been, how it's used now versus maybe how it was used before. And you're gonna be using the internet to research all of these different questions, okay? So I give some examples, okay? Some examples of an artifact would be a computer, a water bottle, cell phone, but there's lots of options. I've had people do presentations on glasses, and cars and airplanes the list is really really long of what you can pick so pick something that you're interested in after you pick your object you're going to start to gather the information about your artifact and then you're going to prepare a presentation in the last two days displaying that in a published manner so let's take a look at what you're going to have to answer first one you got to tell me what your product is Okay, what is that name of your artifact? What is it you're researching? What is its purpose? So we wanna know why do we have it? Okay, if it's got more than one reason why we have it, then list those. It's better to list more than it is to list less. Because remember, you're gonna have to turn this into a presentation. We wanna know who the original inventor was. Um, sometimes you can find out who owns the patent. So basically the, the license to be able to continue to make that product and then when was your product invented how was it used originally and how is it used today and everything has changed over time even something like a cell phone the original use was strictly for making phone calls now we have social media we have cameras we have all sorts of different things that we can be using a cell phone for other than phone calls Number five is where you get more specific about some of those changes. Give, give some of those things that have changed about your product over time, okay? Different styles, different brands, different features. The list is endless, but you need to be detailed. Number six is looking at the area of technology that your product best fits into. And it may fit into more than one, okay? So if I use my cell phone example, a cell phone does fit into information and communication because I can send and receive phone calls, okay? I might also say that a cell phone fits into energy and power because we have to use electrical energy to charge it, okay? And I can keep going. You're gonna look at what each of these are. I give examples and I give you the definition of what that type of uh, technology is. All right, number seven, I want at least three positive impacts your product has had on society. Number eight, I want at least three negative. Number nine, this should look familiar. We did one of these in our intro to engineering lab. I want you to tell me how your product fits into each of the areas of STEM. So what ties your product into science? Is it the materials? Okay. What ties it into technology? Engineering? Math, you've got to be specific on each of those again. And the last one, you need to tell me if you had the ability to change your product in any way, I want you to come up with two big changes you would make to it, okay? So money, not a problem. You have every resource you need. What would you do to change your product, okay? So once you get the research phase done, you are going to then take that research and compose a presentation. 
I want to take a look at this here. We can see this assignment is going to be a total of 60 points. You're going to be working on it for four days. Okay. 40 of those points are the content. So you have to make sure that all of those questions are included when you make your presentation. Okay. You can add more information that I didn't ask about, but if you include less, you'll see that you're going to miss some points there. 15 of your points are going to come from organization. So no spelling errors. Everything is easy to read. It's nice and organized. So the style that you're, you're putting it together with. And the last five points are going to be that you turn in your notes. So the questions to guide you that we just looked at, you are going to submit that in Canvas. You are going to make sure to submit both your notes and the presentation here into the same assignment in Canvas. So you may have to hit resubmit for the next one. But don't worry, I get both copies of whatever it is you submit. So make sure that you submit both your presentation and your notes, okay? When it comes to creating your presentation, you can use either Keynote or Google Slides, okay? Those are your two options. There is no slide minimum or slide maximum. As I showed you in the rubric, this is about content and organization. So do the research and make sure your information is displayed clearly in your presentation. Okay. All right. So you guys are going to spend again Monday and Tuesday getting your research done. Tuesday, if you have your research finished, you can go ahead and start to prepare your presentation. And then you will work on Wednesday and Thursday on your presentation. When you get it finished, you will need to make sure to submit that in PDF form so that I can actually open it up. Okay, don't send a keynote as a keynote. You have to make sure you export those items. Okay, and if it's a Google Slides presentation, you're not sharing it where you type my email in. It has to go into Canvas. So make sure to look at my Canvas homepage for the reminders on how to get that put into Canvas and into that PDF format.